All right, folks, let's take another stab at this. I released a video yesterday, I think it was, talking about all the different throttle settings in CleanFlight and how they interact. And it had at least one major error in it, which I released another video to correct. And that video wasn't actually even completely correct, at which point I just took them both down. I, I know how bad information can live forever on the internet, and I didn't want to be a part of that. So I'd rather say nothing than say, 70% uh, correct, 30% wrong, uh, but really wrong. So let's take another stab at this, and I'm going to see if I can get this done in 15 minutes, but maybe this will be a two-parter because it, it is a complicated topic, and I, I do like to talk. All right, here we go. We start with the stick position on the transmitter, and that stick position is going to go from bottom to top, minus 100 to 100, however you want to put it, and that is mapped to a output value uh, from say 1000 to 2000 microseconds ppm timing. Now those endpoints of that uh, channel are defined in your transmitter and if you have a transmitter like the Tyrannus you can adjust those pretty much infinitely well not infinitely I mean there's a certain max beyond which you cannot go and minimum but you have a lot of power to adjust those to whatever you feel like they should be. When you're working with servos, of course, the ability to adjust the endpoints affects the amount of throw that the servo has, and so being able to add an extra 20% to that is kind of a big deal. But when you're working with something like a flight controller, the, the PPM values, they're just a placeholder for, the, the we just need to represent the stick position somehow. So going from uh, 1,000 to 2,000 and going from 1,100 to 1,900, there's not really any difference there. One of the, the bottom is zero and the top is 100%. And the only difference is that the 1000 to 2000 range has more resolution. It has a thousand steps of resolution, whereas 1100 to 1900 has 800 steps of resolution. So, so there's more resolution in the wider channel values. But my point is that as long as you have enough resolution, like would you notice the difference between 800 and 1000 steps of resolution? Probably not, you probably couldn't feel that. As long as you have enough resolution, all that matters is that everybody agrees on what the minimum and the maximum are going to be. So if CleanFlight is expecting a minimum of 1,000 and your transmitter is giving it a minimum of 1,100, then CleanFlight's going to think that your throttle is not all the way down when it really is. And that's where some of these uh, transmitters that don't have adjustable endpoints can get you into trouble. Uh, if you have a transmitter that doesn't have adjustable endpoints, uh, it often will not go all the way down to 1,000 or up to 2,000. That's just not how the, ca the, the internal mechanics are calibrated. And so you, you will get into a situation like where you, you can't arm your copter. You push the stick down to the right, the copter doesn't arm. And we'll talk about that as we go forward in this, in this video. Okay, so you got your stick position. It's mapped to a range of nominally 1,000 to 2,000 can be set by the channel endpoints on the on the Tyrannus or whatever whatever your transmitter is. Obviously, not everybody flies Tyrannus. Okay, now you've got your flight controller. Your flight controller is receiving the PPM signal from the receiver, okay? Receiver to flight controller. There's often a little bit of timing difference between them so that if your transmitter in, in the Tyrannus' uh, servo screen, you can actually see what, what channel, uh, what output value it thinks it's sending. And it often won't agree completely with what the receiver tab uh, in the clean flight configurator shows. Okay, so the one of the first things you're going to need to do when you're setting up a new system, and anytime you change your receiver especially, or, or if you change your flight controller, or if you change your transmitter, any of those three, is you're going to need to adjust your channel endpoints so that clean flight in the receivers tab shows 1,000 at the bottom, 2,000 at the top, and 1,500 on the channel when the stick is centered. Okay? If your transmitter cannot do that, there are ways to work around it that in the interest of keeping this video at a reasonable length, I'm not going to go into. We're just going to assume that you have set your transmitter so the bottom of the channel is 1,000, the top of the channel is 2,000, and the center stick is 1,500. You need to do that for all four of your stick channels. Your aux channels, it doesn't matter so much, but for the stick channels, it, it definitely needs to be done. The exception to that is the throttle. If you don't have a spring-loaded throttle, which most people aren't flying with a spring-loaded throttle, uh, then you do not need to worry about the center point of the throttle, only the top and bottom. Okay? All right. You got to do that, though. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of drift. Your copter is going to drift. It's not going to stay stationary because the, 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 throttle, the channel may not be centered. Or in the, in the case of the throttle, if it's not calibrated right, you may 
uh, not get full power or you may not be able to go all the way to zero throttle when you want to shut it down or um, you may not be able to input stick commands. So let's talk about stick commands and that brings us to min check and max check. How does the flight controller know when you mean to be entering a stick command? You push the stick down and to the right and you mean to arm the copter or down and to the left and you mean to disarm the copter. Well, how does the flight controller know you're not just doing a really crazy aerobatic move? And the answer is min check and max check. When the stick position goes above min, uh, max check or below min check, the flight controller concludes that you're inputting a stick command. Okay, so when you, when you go to disarm your copter, if your throttle doesn't go below min check, because say you've got uh, say you've got an old transmitter and the pot's a little worn out, or maybe you have a cheap transmitter and, and it doesn't have adjustable endpoints and it just so happens that it doesn't go that low, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But if it doesn't go below min check, you're not going to be able to disarm. If it doesn't go above max check, well, there you know, it turns out that the, uh, the max check, it, it's used with the throttle, right? When, when you push the throttle all the way up to the top, to do, for example, gyro or accelerometer calibration, you push the throttle up and to the right, I believe, or up and to the left. But mostly uh, max check, I mean, that's not a lot of people do that, I dare say. Um, the other thing max check might be used for is, I believe, that you push the throttle up and then the right stick goes left, up, or right to select profile one, two, three. So, so that's a thing that max check might be used for. Or when you push the stick, the throttle down and to the right to arm the copter, that yaw channel going right is going above max check because it's going up. So that's min check and max check. The place where people get confused is when we then in add min throttle, min command, and max throttle to the situation. And now let's take a few minutes and talk about them. Min command is the, the value that is sent to the ESC when the copter is disarmed. Min throttle is the, va the lowest value that will be sent to the ESC when the copter is armed. And max throttle is the top of the throttle range. Now I need to stop there and, and make a very important distinction that is a source of a lot of confusion. There are two different things we're talking about here. And both of them are measured on a scale of 1,000 to 2,000 microseconds. But they're two separate things. They're not the same thing. One of them is the stick position which is input into the flight controller from the receiver. And one of them is the throttle value that the flight controller is outputting to the ESC. And those two things, obviously they're related because as you raise the throttle, you know, the ESCs throttle up, right? But those, are, those two things are being managed by the flight controller. And unlike a fixed wing, where you would just have the throttle channel run straight to the ESC, they are not the same thing. And the fact that they both are represented by PPM values of 1,000 to 2,000 leads people to think that they're the same thing and you get a lot of confusion and I, I also have been subject to this confusion and I hope that I've been set straight and that I'm giving you good information here. I'm not immune to this, but you get a lot of confusion that comes from that. So there is an input of stick position and an output of, we'll call it the throttle value to the ESC. So the way that the system works is when the stick is below min check, it's in a dead band. And depending on if you have feature motor stop active or inactive, either min command will be sent or min throttle will be sent. Now let's talk about a little bit more about the difference between those two. The goal of min command is to send a value to the ESC that tells the ESC to stop the motor. So min command needs to correspond to zero throttle or zero output from the ESC to the motor. The goal of min throttle is to provide a minimum value that keeps the motor spinning. And the reason for this is that you never want the flight controller to be able to cause the motors to stop in flight. So let's say you do a, a left roll. Well, the left motors slow down and the right motors speed up. How slow should the left motors go? Not below min throttle. Otherwise, the copter will tumble, it'll be bad, okay? So that's the goal of min throttle. So when you are below min, when you're disarmed, the flight controller sends min command to the ESC. When you're armed, if you have feature motor stop active, it also sends min command so the motors don't move. But the default is to have feature motor stop turned off 
and it sends min throttle, which idles the props. Now, another place where there's a lot of confusion is the relationship between min check and min throttle. Should min check be above min throttle, below min throttle? It turns out it doesn't matter. And that, the reason for that goes back to the distinction between the input value, which is the stick position, and the output value, which is the throttle value that's sent to the ESC. When you have the stick at min check, the flight controller, or below, below if you have motor stop turned off, when you have it set the stick at min check, the flight controller will output min throttle. And it doesn't matter where min check is. The flight controller scales the available range of throttle output values from min throttle up to max throttle to the range starting at min check and going up to max throttle. So let's say I set min check to 1500 and min throttle to 1100. When you, the throttle was at the middle position, the flight controller would output to the ESC 1100. And then your whole throttle range would just be squeezed down and compressed between 1500 and the top of the range, which is nominally 2000. So it doesn't matter what you set min check to, min throttle is always going to be wherever you set min check to. And then your available throttle range will go from min check on up to the top of the range. And if that doesn't make sense, think about that and go back and listen again or whatever you need to do, but make that make sense to you because that's a really important thing that a lot of people don't understand, including me, until, you, until today. Now here's the next thing uh, that may be uh, unexpected, and that is that the we scale the bottom of the range to min check. You would expect that we would scale the top of the range to max check and that there would be a dead band at the top of the throttle range, just like there's a dead band at the bottom of the throttle range. And I'm told by people whose opinion I trust, uh, I think Zen Man on RC Groups is one of them, that that is not how it works. That in fact, at the top of the range, max throttle is, is always the top of the range. So you scale from min check, you scale the output values of min throttle to max throttle from the input va values of min check to max throttle. So max throttle actually, actually applies to both the input and the output. So whatever your max throttle is set to, that stick position will always command the same output. Um, so for example, if you have max throttle set at 2000, then when your stick is at 2000, your input PPM is at 2000, the output throttle value will also be 2000. Now this may be important if you have a transmitter that does not go all the way up to 2000 and does not have adjustable endpoints. Let's say you've got a transmitter and, and you, it doesn't have adjustable endpoints and you push the throttle stick all the way to the top and the throttle channel reads, uh, say it's 11, uh, 1950. Well, then you would probably, I think, if my understanding is correct, take this with a grain of salt. This is the one thing I'm not sure about so far. I know that I'm not sure about is that I think you would want to reduce max throttle to 1950 and then also reduce max check by a corresponding amount. Because if you didn't, if your max throttle is 2000, but your transmitter only goes up to 1950, your flight controller will never perceive that you are commanding maximum throttle. But maybe not. And that's when we get into this topic of the ESC. Let's go there and then we'll come back and we'll revisit this a little bit.